So what is up guys, this is Cobb and welcome to a beginner's guide, a fundamentals guide to getting started with Reaper, one of the most fun jobs I've tried so far in PvP. In PvP, goddammit. We're gonna spend the first few minutes of the video just kind of rattling through the abilities, just in case you're totally unfamiliar. There's gonna be a timestamp on screen right about now if you wanna skip ahead of that and get to some actual in-game analysis, some in-game breakdown action. But for now, for the people who are totally new to Reaper in PvP, here comes a quick ability breakdown. Okay, so first on the menu, we have Infernal Slice. This is your basic spammable ability, so definitely have this on your most comfortable keybind. Spamming Infernal Slice alone will perform a three basic ability combo like so. Pretty standard for Reaper. Um, it's all just been condensed down to one button for the sake of PvP. Now, this action will transform into new actions depending on what cooldowns you currently have activated. So again, do make sure that this one is on a easily accessible keybind as it is going to be your most pushed button in PvP. Next up, we have Soul Slice. This action should always always, always be used on cooldown. Not only does it deliver an attack of high potency, but it also grants you an important stack of Immortal Sacrifice. As you can see up in here, we have two charges to spend. We rattle them both out. We have two Immortal Sacrifice charges. Soul Slice is the only ability in your spellbook that can generate a stack of Immortal Sacrifice. However, you can gain even more stacks by scoring kills and assists in PvP up to a maximum of eight stacks in total. Why are Immortal Sacrifice stacks so important? I'll tell you why. The next action on the list is Plentiful Harvest. This is a one minute cooldown attack whose damage can scale up to 20,000 based on how many stacks you have ready. That said, spending a Plentiful Harvest with eight stacks, which is the max, is mostly like a dream scenario, uh, it's very, very rarely actually going to happen. Generally, spending Plentiful Harvest with three or four stacks is just fine, especially early on in the game. And this is because an additional effect of Harvest is that it gradually charges your limit break for 15 seconds. So check this out real quick. Urgh. Do a moderate amount of damage and our LB bar this is kind of gradually charging on its own, and it charges quite a bit, uh, again, over the course of 15 seconds, as you can see right here. So do not be holding on to this ability for too long in the first fight. Try to get it out after just a few stacks, just for the limit break charge, honestly. Your next ability is Grim Swath. This is your AoE Conal Slowing action. It does deal a bit of damage, and it has no global cooldown. So it's very, very nice to kind of toss out on to the first target that you engage on just to get that big ass slow. Um, it does also transform your Infernal Slice action, as you can see here, into Gibbet and Gallows. Okay, I actually lost it there, so I'll do it again. Ugh. And these are just some nice 8k potency weapon swings as well, uh, lasting for two charges. Next up we have Death Warrant, the first really interesting ability. This is a 7 second debuff that stalls 50% of the damage you deal to a target for the duration, and when the debuff ends, all stored damage is dealt in a single boom of base damage. Uh, combining Death Warrant with other really high damage actions can lead to some ridiculous burst, uh, which we will see play out a little bit later in this happy little video. And then I'll kind of just demonstrate real quick now. Ugh. Okay, we didn't do that much there, but trust me, it's insane if you manage to time this all just right. You might have noticed as well is that uh, using Death Warrant also transforms the action into an ability called Harvest Moon. And Harvest Moon deals between four and 8,000 damage based on how much health your target is missing and also heals you for the full amount as you can see right there. What's also pretty sweet is that both Death Warrant and, where is it, Harvest Moon are actually both off the global cooldown as well, so very, very smooth to use and should be used pretty much on cooldown uh, for whatever you are currently hitting. Next ability is Hell's Ingress. This is your basic engage tool. It's a short teleportation that actually teleports you back to where you started if you hit the bind again, and as long as you are within range of the happy little tear in reality that you make over there. So if I head too far away, um, we will actually lose it. Head back into range. It's a pretty long range. You do need to have line of sight on the little portal that you leave behind. So that's worth uh, bearing in mind too. You can perform some nice little dukes with this. Very, very happy, lovely little ability. The next on the list is, however, Arcane Crest. Now, this shield is probably the most secretly powerful tool 
uh, in your kit. It provides a barrier soaking up to 12,000 damage. And if this barrier is broken, you and nearby allies are healed for two ticks of 6,000 health over six seconds. Uh, this heal is honestly insane. And it's really the primary reason that it is not uncommon for you to have more healing than damage in some of your PvP matches. Use it on cooldown. Use it often. 10 seconds is plenty of time for the shield to break. Uh, this is really your bread and butter value tool for your team. And finally, we have your limit break. Tenebrae Lemurum, I believe this is called. Using this LB uh, affects nearby enemies with hysteria, forcing them to run away from your cast point, which is very, very good for securing objectives in clutch situations. Your good old Infernal Slice as well is also going to evolve into... What the hell is this thing called again? Well, it's basically spammable 8k melee damage. Uh, but do be warned, every attack that you dole out while in your LB is going to consume stacks of Enshrouded, which you can see up there in the top right before I lost the stacks. So let me just end this back real quick so I can show it again. Okay, so the trick with your ultimate is, is that you only get five stacks. Every time you use an ability with your ultimate, one of your special empowered abilities, you do lose a stack. So yeah, you have 15 seconds to spend the five stacks and you want to make sure that you save one stack. So I'm just going to spend four of them here to hit your ultimate bind again, because now your ultimate is changed into Communio. Ugh which is a big ass bit of base damage that you use as a finisher. So Communio does replace your limit break button, once again, as long as you have at least one stack of Enshrouded and it deals a large amount of base damage at a very short cast time. So it's basically the finisher. Try not to spend all of your goddamn stacks on just hitting your goddamn empowered melee ability. Save one stack for Communio. And that is the Reaper PvP ability breakdown. Let's get into some goddamn actual gameplay, man. All right, goddammit. Let's get into a little bit of slowed down gameplay and actually talk about some of the decisions that we make in this happy little game. And I'm going to kind of jump around between some examples that I think might be helpful to any new Reapers in PvP. This is around gold rank, by the way. Um, so, yeah, make of that what you will. It's representative enough of gameplay at gold rank that maybe it'll help out some new guys. So yeah, I'm a little bit wiggly about engaging. Why? As good as Arcane Crest, uh, our 12k shield is, um, it, it, it's not exactly super strong. You're not a tank. If like three or more people are focusing you, you're going to die extremely quickly. Um, you never want to be getting focused by the entire team as Reaper. Now, if a couple of guys are hitting you, you can actually survive for a pretty ridiculous amount of time, um, providing that they're not bursting you with an insane amount of cooldown. So anyways, I'm trying to kind of focus on the back lines right here. We tried to jump on the summoner and you'll notice straight away, as soon as I'm in, the first thing I do is pop goddamn Arcane Crest. Why do I pop it so early? Well, it's only a 20 second cooldown, right? So you might as well use it very, very often. It's only a 12k shield um, and the duration of the shield is 10 seconds, okay? We actually want the shield to break. That's all part of the plan, okay? If the shield doesn't break, you don't get the healing after the shield. The shield needs to break for you to get the uh, heal over time effect and for all of your nearby allies to also get the heal over time effect, right? So you wanna kind of pop the shield as soon as you've taken even a little tickle of damage or if you see somebody targeting you. You know what I'm saying? So we're gonna use it straight away here. Uh, we're also going to apply death warrant on this guy straight away so that he's soaking up 50% of all the damage that we deal to him. Um, and we're just gonna fucking start wailing on this guy immediately with all of our goddamn swambables, with our gibbet, with our goddamn roots. And you can see right now, the death warrant is about to end. So this guy's just, I mean, he picked up a potion, which is kind of sucky. I should have like ninja the potion before he got to it, but it's whatever, right? He's taking a bunch of damage. He heals a lot. The goddamn living bomb, I'm just gonna call it, is about to explode on him now. I don't think he actually dies, but he's already blown like most of his mana, if you can see down here, uh, on healing, which is really, really good for us. Like a summoner does not want to be out of mana, you know, because they die so, so easily if they're focused. And oh, uh, the death warrant just dealt like a billion more damage to him. So even though he blew all of his mana on healing, once that thing detonated, he takes a stupendous amount of damage and he kind of gets away a little bit here. I think I leave him alone, but um, I, I think I like struggle to catch up to him after this. You also notice just there though, really, really early on in the fight, right? I'm blowing my goddamn plentiful harvest on him. Bam! Why are we doing that? Well, we're already like halfway towards limit break, right? It doesn't even do that much damage. It hits him for like 6k or something, but that's not the point, right? Look at our goddamn limit break right now. Look at it. Oh, 
I'm looking at it right now, man, and it's making me pleased, right? Look at all that goddamn Limit Break charge. You get your Limit Break within like 20 seconds um, of mini game starting. So, River Extend just a little bit here. I get a little bit scared. I have to pop my guard at this point, but this open is already good, man. It's already feeling really, really good. Uh, just because we got our limit break so, so early, we put out a lot of goddamn pressure. We traded one for one at this point, um, and I'm really just looking to get my mana back uh, around here. I can't remember if I stay in in this fight, but honestly, I'm the kind of guy who would highly... It looks like I actually stay in, uh, just keep on killing here, but as soon as you drop below like 3,000 mana, even like 4,000 mana, get your ass out and use a goddamn potion, you know? I think that way too many people stay in the fight for way too long. Like this machinist who's on the point right now with 2,500 mana, He's way better off just running away, just getting his ass out of there, you know? Because what's going to happen? Well, now we're just going to fucking start beating the shit out of him. He's also got a uh, harvest on him right now. Takes a stupid amount of goddamn damage uh, because of the, not harvest, the, the death warrant ability, you know? We stack up a ton of damage on him and he just dies horribly, right? Horribly. So even though this first fight, I think, ends up going kind of bad, uh, like my shield is on cooldown just now and... Yeah, I, I think that we get dumpstered on just here, just because I'm kind of out of steam and I die before my uh, shield comes back. This was a really, really good opening fight, you know? We got off an LB, we're already well on our way to charging our next one, and check that out, nobody else on the team has even got their first LB yet. And we are like already charging our second one, man, and that's the power of using your plentiful harvest nice and early. And that's actually just coming off cooldown again now, so if we live through another fight, we could be on two LBs before most people even hit one. You know what I mean? So that was a good little intro, I think. I'm going to skip forward a little bit now to the next key clip that I want to show you all. Okay, so we've pushed the point on just a little bit further here at this point, and here I just want to again show you the power, the power, man, of Plentiful Harvest. So we run in, we're going to use our goddamn, I think that Soul Slice that we're spamming. Yes, it is. Slicing the fuck out of them, getting some snacks. Um, and again, I'm just going to be using my Plentiful Harvest here. Pretty much just for LB charge. Um, so what I end up doing is actually using Plentiful Harvest. And then using my ult. And I'm charging my LB again to like halfway. While I'm in my current LB form, you know. So it's fucking crazy. There's the Plentiful Harvest. This is going to give us ult. Uh, sorry, our limit break straight away. I always call it ult. Um, and then we blow our goddamn LB, but look at our LB bar, dude. It's like, it's like rapidly charging again already. Um, and it, it's just ridiculous, man. So, again, don't be holding on to your goddamn plentiful harvest forever, right? Yes, it's a big, nice, big, sexy lob on of damage when you do get off, you know, a huge 7 or 8 stack uh, plentiful harvest. But honestly, just using it for the goddamn LB charge, for rapidly charging limit break, is just as powerful, man. It's just as great. So we end up snowballing the point here anyway uh, and winning this game pretty handily. So next up, I want to show y'all the insane base damage when the stars really do align and you get off a huge plentiful harvest with like seven or eight stacks and everything is just fucking awesome. So let's move on to that clip next. Okay, we into the next clip, boys. And oh my God, I didn't get off my guard in time to stop myself getting blown up in the air. I was distracted. I was a killing machine. But look, man, it's fine. Why? Because we have Arcane Crest, and this summoner thinks that he's cool, man. He thinks that he's awesome. He's about to get erased. Check out our stacks. We've been doing well in this game. Um, I managed to be spamming my Soul Slice on cooldown. As you can see, it's actually on cooldown right there, so we've been getting maximum stacks, right? Always want to be spamming out that ability on cooldown uh, just to reap up as many stacks as you possibly can, and we end up charging a 7 stacker. So Plentiful Harvest right now, is fit to do like 18-ish, uh, 18k-ish damage in like one button, which is just crazy. It's like half of the, or like a quarter of the summoner's health or something in one button. So what do we do? We go ahead and we apply Death Warrant to this goddamn summoner. So 50% again of all the damage that we're dealing is stacking up on him right now. It's stacking up on him, right? He's taking a stupid amount of damage. We have up our Arcane Crest. It's healing us back. Uh, so we're not worried at all about this guy killing us. And now the goddamn uh, Harvest is about to proc. So we toss out the plentiful harvest at just the right time. Death warrant's about to trigger. Ugh. Oh my god, dude. He doesn't even he doesn't even know what happened to He's on the forums right now, raging about how OP fucking Reapers are, but really, really. 
uh, the stars just aligned. You know, the stars just aligned. As people get more and more used to facing Reapers in PvP, uh, stuff like that just isn't going to happen so much because they'll actually take notice, or like good players will take notice of the Death Warrant debuff on them, and they'll think, holy fuck, once this debuff ends, I'm going to take a shitload of damage, and they'll like guard it and things like that, right? Or they'll pop a cooldown or a shield, uh, or they'll even pre-heal it. Uh, but for now, you can do crazy shit like that, right? If you notice that you've got a whole bunch of snacks and you really want to take someone out of the game, oh my god, man, this is a really, really good way to do it. So there it is again, man. The goddamn good old Death Warrant. It's ticking down. One second left. Ugh. Toss out the Plentiful Harvest and just absolutely ruin that guy's day. He died with Limit Break as well right at the end of the game, dude. So he's like really, really upset. Uh, and then actually over here on the point, we pop our ult, you'll notice too. This is a really good way that you can use your ult in the late game to secure objectives. Um, we pop our limit break, sorry, I keep on calling the fucking ult. We pop our limit break just for the hysteria effect, just to fear this guy off of the point, and it results in a nice and easy uh, quick cap and a victory before anybody in his team can reinforce. So yeah, that's a happy little way that you can use your limit break. All right, then just to check out one more opener real quick. Again, I like to kind of tag at the squishies, right? Why? Because we can dive in like that using, is it called Ingress? Yeah, Hell's Ingress. Uh, we can dive in like that, right? And if we instantly get targeted, we can just hit the same button again and pop back over here towards our portal. So it's really quite safe to kind of jump in as long as, right, as long as you're not jumping into like five people and they're all looking at you and you're thinking you're fucking one-shotted, okay? So that's something to be aware of. You'll also notice right now I'm holding onto my arcane crest. Normally I pop it immediately, but I'm like, huh, none of these guys are actually looking at me, so we just start wailing on this guy a little bit. And again, you'll notice right away, Soul Slice, both charges have been used immediately. Immediately, right? You want to get those cast straight away so that you get your two charges of whatever the fuck this thing's called again. <laughs> it's like the worst guy ever. But whatever, you want to get those charges set up straight away so that you can do this. Ugh. Toss out a plentiful harvest, and again, get the limit break charging as quick as possible. I noticed some of the guys are looking at me right here, so I believe I popped shield just now, and I decided to stay in like an absolute madman. Oh no, I don't, I run for my life because I'm I'm, I'm a good player, I'm learning. Um, and then we just start wailing on this motherfucker, and again, check this out, man. We get the death warrant popped up on this guy, right? some death warrant action on this guy we're just gonna beat the absolute shit out of him with our goddamn ult and everything i see that he's getting kind of low so i try to pop the hysteria trying to uh one shot this guy at the same time the death warrant pops that's another thing you can do as well um if you see a guy like half health the death warrant is coming to an end and you can pop ulti to get the ministeria there's a pretty good chance that you're gonna be able to just one shot them um while they're in the hysteria, right? And that's what I'm trying to do here. So the death warrant pops for like 11k. We beat the fuck out of this guy. He does sadly get the guard off. So it doesn't quite work out. But honestly, we've gone one for one in this fight so far. The amount of pressure we've dealt is unbelievable. Um, and I nearly go down here, but whatever, man. Arcane Crest is back up again. And this is the this is the ideal scenario uh, to be in as Reaper. They're all kind of low as fuck. They're missing a guy, right? I'm feeling really goddamn safe right now. Even if all of these guys were to focus me right now, it's like a couple of healers. You know, I, I suppose the ninja is, uh, he does pose something of a threat. Ninjas are a real pain in the ass, actually, for Reaper. I'd highly recommend focusing those bastards down and forcing them to run away uh, before you commit like this. But again, they're all feeling really, really weak right now. This is the ideal situation for us, right? We can actually start frontlining at this point. And Arcane Crest is just that fucking good. We pop that shit again. We want it to break so that we're just healing everybody. We're healing ourselves. We're healing all of our nearby teammates. And man, we just go and ape shit. Before I go ahead and wrap up this video, I just want to share one more quick thing on the target dummy. So let me swap back into the game real quick, just after I see how this fight turns out. Arcane Crest off cooldown again, taking no goddamn damage. They pop it. Now we're fucking healing. We just don't give a goddamn rat's ass about anybody in this game. We've got a bunch of stacks. So I'd like to see myself plentiful harvest right now to global this guy. Ugh. There it is. There's the 20k, dude. That's what I'm talking about. So sometimes it's hard to notice how many stacks you've got in the thick of PvP, but it really, really pays to try to notice um, and to remember to be using your plentiful harvest as much as possible because, yeah. Pretty sure this guy would have got away with ult if we hadn't landed that huge goddamn 20k ridiculousness on that guy, you know? 
So there you go, man. There's a little bit of happy. There's a happy little bit of repeat PvP, man. Um, and yeah. One more thing before we wrap this one up that is a useful little tidbit for you all to know as well. Okay, so the last little tidbit worth mentioning is that you have obviously your Grim Swath ability down here, which is like your Cornel uh, Snare ability right off the global cooldown. When you pop your Limit Break, your Tenebrae Lemurum, it actually resets the cooldown of Grim Swath and also... Uh, upgrades it slightly. So what you want to actually be doing is before you ult, always try to check that you have Grimswath on cooldown. Um, if you don't, you might as well just use it for an extra 4,000 damage just real quick before you pop your ult because it's about to get reset anyway, right? And it should look something like this. So uh, uh, ult real fast and then you get another one to toss out right away like that known as the Muir Slice. And there you go. There you have it. There's the last happy little tip. And Grimswath is already coming off and cool down again. So what a happy little ability that is. So, hey, thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you all did enjoy this happy little Reaper guide. Have fun cleaving the fuck out of idiots. Um, and yeah, <laughs> subscribe, like, all that good stuff. And I shall catch all of you guys just a tad bit later. <laughs>